back to International Scale Mod Romley. Uh, salut. Uh, I just wanted to say, first of all, before I go any further, a big thank you to everyone for your support and encouragement um, and kind words after uh, my little rant last week. I do apologise about that. Um, it was very much appreciated. Uh, uh, cheers to you all. <laughs> and if you haven't tried this stuff, I think you can get it in the UK. Uh, Australia, uh, it's fantastic, it's quite sweet lager, but it doesn't matter how much you drink, you can't get a hangover on it, spot on. Anyway, uh, first of all we're going to go on to the Ultimate News Update, a bit of news about Ultimate Modern Products this month. Uh, we've got a new seller for the United States, yay! <laughs> um, a lot of people have been asking quite a while, ever since we started really, when are we going to have a reseller in the States, and we've had a problem with... Um, uh, with the contents and everything and shipping dangerous goods and stuff like that in, in bulk uh, and we've now found a solution that works for us so uh, we're pleased to announce that we've got Hobby World USA um, I've started to take on our stock now they've taken on a massive shipment of thinner initially uh, and then they're going to th clean the next month and then they're going to have the rest of our products over uh, over the course of the summer they'll have the whole range um, now I just want to say well done to you guys because they've taken a bit of a punt on it and everything but uh, um, so uh, if, you, if you're in the USA, you've now got two options. You've either got uh, Hobby World USA and you've also got obviously Stroke Force Hobbies in Canada. And just to let you know about Stroke Force as well, they've got a, a big uh, restock which should be in in the next couple of days after this film get, uh, this program gets aired. So anyone who's waiting for their goods from Strike Force, they should get them there as well. Uh, and good news also for all our Antipodean uh, uh, Ultimate fans, um, BNA Model World have just made a massive order. Really, it should last them a good six, seven months. Um, and, but that's got to go by boats. So it's going to take about five or six weeks to get there. But um, all you guys in the uh, Australian and New Zealand side of the world, you should be able to get those in the next five or six weeks. It's a massive order, should last them a long, long time. So uh, that's got to go by boat, it's that big. Uh, but uh, anyway, so good news for you guys who need to buy from the shops, you know, in your local areas. That's fantastic. Um, obviously, we've got um, uh, some big news for uh, another manufacturer that we're taking on in the next couple of months. We should be announced hopefully next month when we fix out stock levels and things like that. But uh, that'll be uh, it's quite a nice little uh, obscure one as well, so it's fantastic. So anyway, that's uh, that's to our ultimate new, uh, ultimate modern products news. Uh, now we're going to go on to the forum, obviously. Excuse me. Mm. Ah. I'm going to have to put my glasses on because that sheet's really bouncing off my face. Uh, right. Okay. So obviously we've got uh, the ISM forum updates, including all the GB sigs, the competitions, the prizes. Uh, mine and Paul's build date. Oh, I've got another build date this month. Woohoo! Knocking them in there. Uh, obviously we've got the prize draw winners, and we'll announce what this month's prizes are for May. Uh, reviews we've got this month are the AK figure holder thingy, um, uh, this here, um, which I'm going to review. I've had this for a couple of months now and I've used it a couple of times. I think it's actually really nice. Uh, Paul's doing the AK FAC aircraft book, which is a new one for, from AK guys. And obviously I'll be doing a quick review on the ammo paint rack that you can get. Very interesting one that one. Um, so uh, we're going to go on to, first of all, uh, my review of the ammo, ammo paint rack. So uh, here's what I think. So there you go. That's my thoughts on it exactly. Uh, it's a piece of crap. Um, I've got to say, it's rebranded, I think it's by Hobby Zone, uh, which is a Polish company. And it's cheaper from their website as well. Um, but it really is, it comes in a box. I, I thought I'd thrown the box away, but I filmed this about three months ago when I bought it. Uh, but uh, I bought two of them, and it comes in a, a, a cardboard box about yay big. Um, no instructions, uh, no guide, no nothing. It literally is just several bits of, of MDF, very thin MDF. Problem is, the MDF's so thin, you can't, you can't just fix it together, because it, it's just not stable, the, the bits don't fit, they're, they're not tight whatsoever. In fact, when I pushed it over that time, half of it sewed together, which it didn't happen the first time when I did, forgot to turn the bloody camera on. Um, but anyway, sorry, rudely interrupted there by the family. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so it literally fell apart um, and uh, I had to use the smallest brad nails that I could find 
and would glue it all up. Uh, but the brad nails I used were the thinnest I could find and it still split the MDF. So uh, absolute pile of crap, as you can see from these photos here. If I managed to get some up, because it's up on the wall and everything already. So uh, what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna go over to the GBs and SIGs now. Right, okay then, so GBs and SIGs, uh, we've got two new ones starting this month. We've got the first, uh, the next ISM GB, obviously the last one's finished now, um, uh, the Rising Sun GB, some fantastic results for that and uh, I think the reveal video will be up very, very soon and not like the last ones. Um, but we've got the, the first one is the Homeland GB, now this obviously runs for four months because it's the main ISM GB uh, until the 31st of August. Um, and the aim is quite simple on this one, you've got to build something military, uh, but it doesn't matter what it is, any genre of modelling or anything, as long as it's military, from your own country. Um, now it has to be in service between 1950 and 2000, so there's 50 years there. Nearly every country in the world has something in service between those two times, so there's something you can build. Um, but again, it's promised to be a, a really good one. It's uh, obviously a lot of emotive subjects there, people building stuff from their own countries uh, in that time frame. And then uh, obviously there's a plethora of models to choose from these days, so I don't think anyone should be hard up to find something. And even if you can't find a mainstream model, you can usually get an aftermarket decal set or something like that to, to sort it out for yourself. But uh, that's, not, that's already started. Uh, sponsored by Models I Go. There's some great prizes up for grabs, as you can see here. Uh, so thanks again to John and Mandy at Models I Go for, for contributing those. Uh, the next one is a member run SIG and it's uh, Kiwi Gav's Star Wars SIG. Now obviously this starts today, I'm filming this on May the 4th, so May the 4th be with you. Um, but this actually starts today for obvious reasons and it goes on until the 18th of December which is when Star Wars 7 is uh, set for a release, general release in the pictures. Um, so that's fantastic. Great idea by Kiwi Gav. Um, and, um, uh, it's been taken up by quite a few members who want to join in. Now it's a long SIG, it's a long term GB and it runs for, well, what, it's going to be a good six, seven months. So plenty of time to start. You can start at any time during those uh, seven months. I mean, I've got several kits that I want to start and, and do in that time if I can. The Star Wars ones, mainly the new Bandai ones. I want to get cracking into those and change those around a bit. Uh, but we've decided to sponsor this. Uh, Ultimate Model Pilots will sponsor this. We've got uh, first place is a £30 uh, voucher to spend on our website, then you've got second and third is a £20 and a £10 voucher uh, to spend on our site. So there's sort of some nice prices there as well. Um, and uh, you can take your pick of anything, the models or our products or whatever's on our site at the time. So uh, that's some great prizes. I'd like to say thanks to Gav for asking to, you know, ask us to host it and everything. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, it should be fun, uh, fun build all the way through because I think many people um, have decided to build more than one model. I think everyone's got, especially with all these new Bandai ones out as well, it's fantastic. So uh, I'm definitely be entering this one myself. Uh, we've also got, still got going, excuse me. Uh, from the 1st of April to the 30th of June, is in the, in the Navy SIG. Um, this is basically, uh, it runs for three months, I think it started last month, so uh, yeah, till the 30th of June. Um, and that will run for three months, um, and it's basically any naval aircraft from any period uh, and any country. So quite a simple one to answer, but it's got to be naval aircraft, so um, no floaty things or anything like that. So quite a nice one. We've also got, obviously, the Rising Sun GB is now finished. Some awesome builds on that, sponsored by Models of Go. Reveal bid should be up very, very soon. I've also got the ISM Easter Egg SIG. Uh, which is finished as well. The reveal vid for that should be up uh, in the next week or so. I want to say thanks to Dom at Retro Kit for, for supporting us once again this year on, on that one. And if you haven't checked it out already, you should go over and check his website, retrokit.com. And also, they've got a Facebook site called uh, uh, Egg Playing Masters on Facebook, which is fantastic. Uh, but uh, thanks for that. It was a lot of fun. Shame I couldn't join in this year, but um, uh, we'll see the reveal vid, as I say. Paul will get that up in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure. Uh, right now, we're going to go over to Paul for a review of an a the AK FAC aircraft, which is quite interesting. Hi guys, Paul from Fantastic Scale Modeler, another book review for you today. This is the new uh, AK Interactive FAQ Aircraft Scale Modeling book. Um, big fan of the FAQ books, got all the armor ones, or both of them, a thicker painting one. There was an older aircraft one from years ago that I've always searched for, missed out a couple of times. And so glad that they finally re-released a brand new one. Not re-released, they've released a brand new one. Uh, I've had this now for about a week. Had a good look through. Uh, already used a couple of techniques. Um, so good to find something new to use. And overall, it just looks a great book. It's a big, thick book. 
They're about 40 odd pounds, I think. Uh, not in weight, in price. And um, there's a lot of information in there from basic or to a bit more experienced as well. So we open it up, have a look. It's a soft back book. And uh, typically it's going to have AK Interactive uh, advertising in there because it'd be stupid not to use it for that. But overall, um, it's fairly ad free to be fair. So a bit of information there. You got thanks to uh, a little bit of a prologue from the uh, the author, the guy who wrote all this. As you can see, there's the index. There's a lot of information in there. Uh, assembly preparation materials, painting guide, techniques. Don't know if for techniques there or techniques. Not sure. Interior, exterior details, camouflage painting and weathering, special finishes and markings, scenes and gallery as well, and the introduction. So a lot of information in there. Introduction. This is covering through uh, the author's background, what he likes to do, painting styles, just basically an overview onto assembly, preparation and materials. So basic tools, techniques, gluing, etc. Right through to rescribing, panel lines, rivets, stretch skin, flight control surfaces, resin and metal parts. It's always good to read, uh, read about. Wiring, canopies, I did look at this from my back phone canopy on my sea fire, polishing them, scratch building, vac form, so I think it's about making your own as well, which is quite handy. Working with vac form canopies, literally just worked on this myself and did find this very handy. So a lot of basic information onto more um, what's the word? advanced techniques. Position lights, so engraved ones, ones cut out. Very good, using adhesive tape, that was a good technique, I got distracted then reading it. Onto antennas, control brace, braces and cables, scratch materials and tools, and then onto paint guides. So for your basic tools, your very basic techniques, onto painting, so go through primers, paints, thinners, acrylics, lacquer base, enamels, oils, metallic colours, watercolour pencils, transparent inks, so a lot of information there as well. Products for effects, so again, as you can see, it's very AK uh, heavy, which it's going to be. Uh, onto their washes, their waxes, varnishes, thinners. Nice to see that they do offer um, other manufacturers stuff in there as well. We need to get some UMP stuff in there, but look of it. Airbrushing, airbrushing techniques, brushes, brushing techniques, and then we're onto techniques themselves. So I don't know if that techniques was supposed to be techniques, I'm not sure. So you got priming, how to prime, paneling, so adding different panel effects, uh, panel pre-shading, so this is a good technique. Give all the panels a different colour, then lightly mist over it with a base colour so that it fades in. Let's give it a, an overall view, good little touch. Pre-shading by lines, using different colours, uh, paneling with tape, which I do all the time. The technique, well, I kind of do different technique. Camouflage with an airbrush, aerial cam airbrushing. Not sure what that's all about. But yeah, there's still some bits I haven't read in this onto mottling. A lot of models hate mottling. Panel light, and, uh, light shadows, that's an awesome effect. That's a beautiful looking wing there, very, very nice. Onto your decals. Laying them down, so like I say, it covers basic techniques and more advanced, and seems to be intermingled through. The index is great if there's something you know specific you want to look at, go to the front. You should be able to find it, and rather than just giving one, uh, so you're looking at canopies like we went through, rather than just giving one type of canopy, it'll give you kit ones, vac forms, scratch bills. It, it gives you a few options. And it's the same with panel liners, panel lines, marking, washes. It gives more than just one technique, which is really nice to see. As you can see onto fluids, filters, it's very, very in depth where it goes, streaking effects, and hopefully if you get it, it should help with your technique. Certainly with mine. We're not all too uh too old or experienced to learn new stuff, so I always welcome books. I've got a huge book collection now. Um and I often glean new information from them. Chips and scratches onto watercolour pencils. Um, this is something I want to try. I only own a prismatic um, silver pencil. Quite to get some of these um, because different colours and have all different effects. It does look a very good um, technique, something I definitely like to look into. Scratches by chips and brush with a sharp knife with a mask using masculine solution. Uh, sponge chipping, uh, hairspray chipping, 
So as you can see, it does give you a lot of different techniques. There's a lot of options to do specific techniques. We skip through it a little bit because we're gonna. It's like nearly 400 pages long. We're gonna be here all day. Uh, instrument panels. So again, wiring them up. Very very nice. That's an awesome looking instrument panel. Uh, cockpits. World War Two. Step by step. Japanese, English, German, US, so again, very, very nice all the way through. Jet Aid, Soviet, British, German, Japanese, US again. So it gives you all the different techniques, keep going through. Very, very good, the Jet Aids again. So different stages, different techniques. Uh, pilots, structures, props, spinners. You name it, it is in here. It just looks absolutely brilliant. We'll just have a quick flick through. You'll see some of the stuff. So flight control surfaces, metal weathering, invasion stripes. Didn't have this myself, but still interested to have a look. Basically the same technique I did, just a little bit different. Uh, that's special finishes and markings. All the way through to where some of the builds are starting to come together now. Natural metal finish. US Jet Navy scheme, German, so you've got a lot of different options, US schemes, British schemes, Japanese, World War II engines, as you can see, beautiful work, really is high quality work, World War I, German crosses, paint masks, walkways, exhaust, that's the one technique I did use, I used that one. The other day, I used that on my Sea Fire, and it came out very well. Very simple, two different colours of paint and a wash, and that's it. Very, very simple, very, very easy. Um, so, missiles, weapons, bombs, wheelbase, landing gear you name it, it's in here. Very, very in depth. Onto your uh, different kind of paints, finishes, checkerboards, uh, creating a scene, so dio bases, making a landing deck. Pre-bought and handmade, desert terrain, concrete apron, I've actually made one of those myself a while back, vehicles, and then the gallery, and some of the work in this gallery, oh my god, it is stunning. We'll have a quick look through the gallery, so you've got Skyhawk, I think it was a P-51, yeah, sorry it's an F-51, late war, well not even late war, just a late P-51, um, fantastic looking plane, oh, excellent camo scheme on there. Very, very nice. Skyhawk, I think stunning. Have a bit of reloading by the look of it. Very, very nice. Avenger. The level of work is just mind bogglingly good. Mitchell. Marauder. Enemy 109. That's very, very nice as well. 109G6. HE219. That's really nice. Fantastic. 109 G10, there's a lot of 109s in here, the Buccaneer, that's stunning. That looks absolutely beautiful there. Very nice. It's just a lot of very nice work, that Phantom's nice. It's, it's just top class book. Highly recommended, I've had it for a week or so now, and I keep picking it up, plumbing through it, and I'm impressed every single time I pick it up. It just looks absolutely stunning, looks really, really good. Spitfire, that's beautiful. Really nice spit. Onto some more unusual aircraft, MiG-21, P-39, P-40, P-51B, another P-51B, that's nice. The Raiden, Wellington, SP-2, Spitfire Mark 1. Like I say, level of work, outstanding Mark 5, a Stuka. Tonka, I hadn't seen that one before, that's nice as well. Very, very nice. Brandenburg. And a Mosquito, which is what I'll be building myself very soon. Very, very nice. Overall, highly recommended kit. Um, it's not too AK heavy, which is what I do like about AK. They do put the manufacturers in there. Obviously, there is some of their stuff in there. They're going to showcase it, of course they are. But overall, books, 400 odd pages long. 384 in fact, so it's a big big book, there's a lot of information in there as you've seen, I couldn't go through it all unfortunately, but it gives you an idea of what's in there, and highly highly recommended, if you're an aircraft fan or new to it especially, 
forty pounds may seem a lot of money, but it is basically just an average price of a kit, of a decent kit. So forgo the kit, buy this, and uh, it will help with your modelling immensely. So there you go. So this is the Interactors FAQ Aircraft Scale Modelling Book. Highly recommended by me. I'm going to enjoy reading this. Um, it's going to come useful, as all my FAQ do books. FAQ books do rather. Um, so, like I say, highly recommended. So there you go. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, hope it didn't bore you too much. Book reviews, oh, um, they just always seem to me like a boring people because it's just waffling through a book. But I like to show the books. Uh, I really do like books. The internet's great, but you can't beat books. Um, so there you go. So catch you later, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around. Okay, thanks for that, Paul. As you can see, very interesting book. I actually quite fancy that myself. <laughs> My wife has just mooned at me, so that was lovely. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, back to forum news. Um, obviously, the kit review section is growing daily. We've got over 750, 760 reviews of kits and photo reviews and videos and everything from members, so thank you very much for that, guys. Keep them coming. It's fantastic. Uh, so we're going to go over to the monthly prize draw winners now. Uh, obviously, before we announce the winners and everything, can we just ask that uh, any winners that of the of the um, prize draws or of the monthly uh, the SIGs and the GVs and that, if you send us a photo of your picture with you with your prizes, that would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, so we go over to this month's prize winners. For the first one, it's the Eduard 148 Limited Edition NATO fighter from E Models. Thank you very much, E Models, for this. Um, and the winner of that is Goose from Liège in Belgium. Well done, Goose. You win the NATO fighter. Excellent prize. And for the UMP um, Burnishing Liquid and PE Placer, the winner of that is Graham B from Halifax, UK. So well done, Graham. You get the Burnishing Liquid and PE pencil. So well done, you guys. If you can both uh, PM me your names and addresses on the website, we'll get those prizes out to you ASAP. Right, okay, so this month's prizes uh, from eModels is the Trumpeter 1350 HMS Abercrombie Monitor. I thought it would be make a great change to have a, a floaty thing for um, a prize. And uh, I think uh, definitely this time, sometime this year, I'm going to do my DD45 Fletcher that I've got. Um, I, do like, I do like ships, just to make a change, you know. Uh, so that's great. So thank you to eModels for that. So fantastic prize. And obviously from UMP, we'll do the Burnishing Liquid again and the PE Placer. So if you want a chance to win those, you go onto the forum, go onto the competitions thread, make sure you post on the thread, uh, count me in or something like that and whatever, all the rules are on there as well. Um, so it's a great, uh, great prizes there up for grabs this month. <clears throat> I think now uh, we're going to go for another review, my review of um, an AK, I call it the voice holder thingy, but uh, I think it's a multi holder it's called or something like that, but uh, quite a handy little tool, so let's have a look. Hi, oh, welcome back to our International Scale Model, I'm Lee. Today we're going to do a, a quick review of uh, this, which is the AK Universal Work Holder. Uh, now, I do believe this is made by another company, um, and I haven't been able to find out who, and then reboxed by AK, a bit like their um, ammo we're doing with a lot of stuff as well. And they seem, a lot of companies seem to be doing this at the moment. So, um, But this is, on the box you've got a picture there of obviously someone hand painting a, a figure which is obviously its initial use um, and then you've got some other applications down the side that we'll go through in a minute uh, but on the front of the box it says a really useful tool which is ideal for holding small and odd shaped parts for filling painting engraving sawing shaping etc the four steel pins can be placed anywhere around the head and are also useful for bending and forming wire around handle can be removed and the head of, uh, and can then be locked in a bench vice which is something I'll go into a little bit in a minute because it's quite handy indeed. So I mean that's on the box and as you can see here it says here uh, multiple uses and applications you can see bending wire around there so you can make chain links and you know barbed wire and all sorts of stuff like that um, for your dioramas or any part of your model that you'd want. You've also got their wooden handle for a bit uh, and it's got the, um, some uh, Stanley blades hold, hold in there with a file going into the Stanley blades. I don't know what that is. Um, that would be interesting to find out what that means, but I have no idea why you would do that. I've never come across anything. Uh, and that's basically it. So let's have a look, see, what's, see what we get inside the box. It just comes, it's quite a sturdy box that it comes in. Um, put that up there. Okay, and uh, has a little plastic bag. Inside the bag you have uh, obviously the holder, it's nice, it's, it feels, it's a good weight, uh, it feels nice to hold and sturdy, which is, and solid. I know a lot of figure painters, uh, they use, uh, they'll, um, you know, 
pop their figure on the uh, bottom of a bottle and glue it on or cork or bits of wood and all sorts of things. I think I did my Judge Dredd on a, on a block of wood. Um, but uh, this is one of those things, it's, it's a lot more comfortable to handle because you, you can kind of manipulate it quite well actually. So, uh, and it, where it's a nice weight, it's, it's, I don't know, it just gives you a feel of something solid and nice. Now on here you've got this little ring which I haven't quite worked out what it is yet, but uh, I'm sure it has a purpose um, and a useful one at that. <laughs> uh, but on here you can see you've got this, you've got this metal plate uh, and on there you, it comes with four there are these pegs that just slot in and out, as you can see. As you can see there, okay, and you get four of those already in the in the thing itself. And you also get a bag with another four, which is very handy indeed. Um, now, basically, uh, it works like a vice. In fact, that's all it is, um, as you can see there. And it goes out quite a way. Um, now, there's quite a lot of applications for this because of how far it goes. If you think. The jaws there, they go uh, 23, 23 millimeters apart, but then you've got your final, you've got your pegs over here, so you can actually hold something that's 60 millimeters uh, wide if you put your pegs on either end, and vice versa, you know, you've got that way, you've got 38 millimeters that way. So very, very handy indeed, and the fact that you can get a plethora of your modeling stuff into that. Um, and you can also, you know, once it's in there for added stability, you can pop elastic bands around it and everything because it's quite a nice surface. Uh, but it's, as I say, it feels nice and easy to use. It's, it's quick and easy. Uh, the other thing is, I'll tell you what, let me show you with a figure on there. Um, let's get Darth in there. Um, let's see. Oh, he's angry. But uh, basically all it is, when you're fixing the figure in, it's just, you can use well, any part of the body really, but in this case I'm going to, just going to pop the foot in on those holders. And there you go, that's it. Nice and simple, as you can see. It's, he's in there, it's not going to move. You're not denting the plastic or anything like that. It's got a nice grip. Um, and as I say, it's very handy to manipulate the figure as you go around. Because it's we have got this long handle, it's very easy to turn upside down and, you know, give you all the angles that you'd need to get to on, on a figure and everything. So I like it. I, some people have slated it saying it's useless, but I don't think that's true at all. Um, so we can get the, it's popped off back. Um, and you can also, also obviously you can take these out as well completely and just use it as a normal vise in there. Now, the other good thing about this is you can take it apart quite easily just unscrew it. Now if you've got, like I used to have in my old uh, man cave, I don't have it in, in this one, but if you've got a bench vise, um, like a little bench vise or a big bench vise, and you want to be able to make that a bit smaller or handier, this little bolt, this, this square area here, as you can see, allows you to fix that into a vise. So your vise would clamp onto there, and then you've got this, this whole mini vise already clamped in, so then you can use that and make it even sturdier if you want to make a fixed point of it and things like that. So I think it's very handy, uh, very handy indeed. As you can see, just it's all good quality, it's well made, it's not cheap, it doesn't feel like it's going to fall to bits any second, any anytime soon. Uh, so I think uh, I flashed up the price already. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember for the life of me what it was. I know it wasn't a lot of money. Um, and when I clicked to buy it, I bought two instead of one <laughs> by mistake. So. Um, what I what we'll do is I will throw this into the UMP Christmas draw. So this will be one of the prizes in the Christmas draw as well. Um, but I think personally, um, I actually think it's quite a handy little tool, um, and uh, it has been slated. Um, and I know it's a little. I think it's about a couple of euros more expensive on the AK site than you can get it from the original site. But I can't remember for the life of me where that is. But if you're buying something from AK anyway, which I was, I was buying some paints and some primers and, and varnish and things like that. And because I'm abroad now, I buy in bulk just to save on postage and things like that. I thought, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll try this and throw it in there. And I've used it, I've used mine a couple of times already just for little bits of plastic. I just want, you know, just need that little bit of extra sturdiness when I hold it and things. Uh, but when I do my figures, all my Judge Dread figures and my, um, my Dark World Creations figures, all my uh, 2000 of these stuff, I think this will be very handy indeed. The only thing I will say is that obviously with uh, the little bit blocks of wood that you can hold, you can, you know, just pop them down on your surface and they'll stand up. This, because of the way it is, you have to lie it down like that. 
um, rather than let's show you a little packs it wind up. But you know, if you had a, if you had a figure on a pot, you just stand the pot like that, and uh, when you when you're having a break or something like that, with this you can't do that, so you have to lay it down. The good thing is this does give you a thing where it doesn't roll around on your desk because of this uh, uh, the bolt and everything. Uh, but you have to be careful that what side you put it down that your figure is not hanging over the edge of your knock it or anything like that. But I think that's not too bad, but it's just not as handy as having something like that. But overall, I like it. Um, and it's one of those tools that you will use, I think, on a regular basis um, or, or for several genres of modeling. So for me, it's a thumbs up. And I, if I remember correctly, I think it was only something like eight euros or something, 10 euros, something like that. It, as I say, the, the price would have been flashed up already, but I reckon it's a good little recommend for me. And I think uh, if you do do figures, it's a definite, um, if you've got a spare tenner lying around, you know, it's worth it. But it does have a multitude of uses and uh, I can see me using that quite a bit. But, uh, but that's it for me. That's the AK Universal Work Holder, a recommend. Until next time, take care, bye-bye. Right, so there you go. Uh, as you can see, I think it's quite a handy little tool. A lot of people have slated it, I've got to say, from when I mentioned that I had one on the, on the Facebook page, I think it was. Uh, but um, I actually like it. I think it's really handy. There's lots of things you can do with it. You know, it's um, many, many different things you can do with it. And the fact that the handle comes off and you can pop that in a vice is very, very handy indeed. I think so, anyway. And great for figures as well. So, um, so over to now we're going to go over to our benches. We'll, we'll have a quick look at mine first. I've actually done some work in the last few days, so I've got something to report. So uh, let's have a look. Right, okay then. So my bench, uh, I've actually had a, a, a bit of work on my bench again this month. Um, first of all, I'll start off with the smallest thing first. I did finish this last month, uh, but I forgot to show it, I do believe. Uh, this is uh, one of the Metal Earth um, Star Wars kits. Obviously it's Darth Vader's or the Advanced TIE Fighter. Um, and you, as you can see, they're fantastic little things. You know, they come with their own stands and everything like that. But the, uh, the, the engraving detail on there is really good. Very tricky to put together, not as easy as they may seem. Unfortunately, I did put this one on back to front. This, this cone is meant to be at the back, as you can see. But uh, the ball part is, uh, this part here of the ball is meant to be at the front, so I couldn't put the guns in the front. But apart from that, um, I, say, I think they're cracking looking models, and I've got I've got the whole uh, Star Wars range now, so I should be doing one of those every now and then. For me, they're great just to sit out on the terrace, uh, on the table, and just do them with a you know with a pair of PE pliers and a pair of cutters, and they're they're fantastic just to sit there if you've got nothing else to do. So I really love those. But that's the first thing that I finished. Woo! <laughs> um, or oh, is the only thing that I finished this month. Uh, obviously, we've got this one, which is an ongoing. Uh, build which is the uh, Tiger Tank which was for uh, in honour of Lord Cohen. Uh, unfortunately as I said I didn't get time to, to finish it or anything like that and uh, uh, I've, I've got to the point now where the base coat's down um, as you can see from here. I'm hoping that this camera picks up the pre-shading and the post-shading that I did. <sighs> it's a little bit dusty. <laughs> um, uh, I'm hoping you can see it on there. I don't know because obviously it doesn't show up on my screen at all. But maybe have a look on that one, see if it comes up on that one as well. So you can have a look there. Okay. Uh, now I'm at the point where this is pretty much, um, as you can see, I've took the, put the wheels on and uh, graphite pencil. Thanks, Paul, for the tip. Um, so graphite pencil on there for the wheels and everything. So it's, it's all ready to go. Um, all I've got to do is I've got to put, uh, I'm waiting. Uh, for a, some drill bits because obviously I've got the uh, the uh, tracks from Fraun which obviously we'll be using some of the ultimate burnishing liquid with because it's the best there is uh, but uh, unfortunately I only had one 0.5 drill bit and that snapped literally about 10 links in so I've had to order a pack of 20 off of the uh, off of eBay so when they when I get them I should finish those off um, get those tracks done because I've still got to put um, the uh, spare track holders on the side of the turret here okay as you can see and uh, obviously some on there as well there's a few odds and sods that go on and then all I've got to do is just paint all the tools and everything as well which um, you know, probably should take quite a while actually because uh, there's quite a few of them on there and the details ever so good great little kit to go together it went fantastic the only thing obviously was was where I had this uh, aftermarket Zim on there, which is the ATAC stuff, which is resin. Very nice and thin, uh, quite pliable, very brittle though, you have to be careful. We snapped it in a couple of places, but 
to be honest with you, it's actually added um, a bit of authenticity to it. The way the edges aren't quite, um, you know, true. Um, and uh, I left them because it had this little bit of roughness, adds a bit of realism to it. So, but as you can see, I have uh, put some uh, modulation on there, some very light modulation on there, just on the tops to give it that little uh, bleach look. But I don't know if it's picking it up on this at all. I know my camera didn't pick it up very well. But that's where I am with that. Um, so hopefully I should, that's gonna be a year long thing now because I wanna do a diorama for it and everything. Um, and as I missed the date, I've got plenty of time to sort it out. Uh, the next thing was, uh, let's put those over there. I had, uh, while I was waiting for some paint to dry on the Tiger, I had this little kit from um, uh, Pegasus, Mo Pegasus Models. And it's basically, I think it's the Nova Rocket or something it's called. And I'll give you a look in the overhead. And I expect it's going to be really reflective because uh, what it is basically, it literally took what, 15 minutes to, to build. There's not a lot of parts, about eight parts in total. A little bit of filling here and there, um, a little bit of sanding along the seam, which which thankfully you can't see now. Um, and uh, what happened? It's just one of those really quick things. I thought I had it there. It cost three pounds at a show. God, about a year. Um, Oh, was it from a show? I don't know where it was. I got it for £3 anyway off of off some eBay thing or something like that. Um, and this has got to a point now where it's had, uh, obviously it's alclad with the black primer and then the chrome on top. Um, now it doesn't come with any decals or anything like that, but I've got a ton of aftermarket decals, oh, a ton of decals left over from bills and things like that. So I'm going to put pop some decals on there because apparently that is just how it's meant to be like that, which is just a bit boring really. Um, I've got a little black base from AK that costs a couple of quid as well that I should put it on. Um, but uh, it's it's come out nice, just a little bit of alcohol and it's kind of very shiny. It's had one layer of aqua gloss on it, um, ready for the decals. And then I should put them on. I've got a little, there's a few little panel lines here and there, which will need, uh, I'll put some washing just to make them stand out a bit. Uh, but uh, apart from that, that's it really. It's not a lot to talk about. Um, you know, I'll, I'll show you when that's done. That'll be finished next month because decals will go on tonight for that, I'm sure. Um, well, it's one of those little in-between builds, you know. Uh, I've also, uh, as you've probably seen on the forum, I don't know if you have or not, I've just started building uh, of this baby. Now, um, I reviewed this kit, uh, and you can see the review on the channel, obviously it's there, it's uploaded last week. Um, and I have to say that um, it looked a bit better on the sprues than it did <laughs> once I took them off the sprues. It's It's... I wouldn't say it's a big of a kit because uh, what people have said, oh, it's a crap kit for the money and all that. Lot. It's not because it's a limited run from a small manufacturer and you're not going to get this in 148 anywhere else. In fact, the only one you can get, I think, is an old Heller one, uh, 172. Um, and it's all raised panel lines and crap like that. It's even worse. It's just all abysmal. Um, but this, uh, as you can see, is going to build up to quite a nice size and I think it's a fantastic looking aircraft uh, one one of our members has kindly put a couple of videos up on uh, on uh, the thread because I've started a build thread and I'm actually going to photograph it from start to finish so I can show you all the good bits and the bad bits about it um, and uh, it's kindly put some videos up for it. Oh, it looks fantastic in the air it's brilliant I love this this profile I love the profile of dead flat profile and everything uh, but I mean I'll take you out to the overhead just to give you an idea if you go and have a look on the thread you can see the bits that I'm talking about but there's a lot of a lot of bits on here where you've just got things like the all these edges are rough I mean these are cleaned up now I've done the inlets they've cleared they cleaned up but all the edges are kind of like this with all this burr on and you know the sprue gates aren't particularly brilliant but it's going to take quite a bit of filling I would imagine and a lot of rescribing not a lot of describing some rescribing in fact I might go and rescribe some of the lines because some of them are a little bit soft um, but uh, the only annoying, really annoying thing is, is um, these, you've got these, um, the proofs are probably where the sprue pushes it out, where the machine pushes it off of the, uh, out of the machine. And they're everywhere. They're all on the inside of all the intakes, as you can see, I've had to uh, cut them down, chisel them out, and then, and then smooth them over. Um, and the way it goes together isn't really that intelligent. But what I will say on Tarangus is, defense is this was only their second kit they ever produced um so i mean you've got to ha say hats off to them really for at least having a go and 
you know, it's a fantastic looking aircraft and you can't get it anywhere else. So why, you know, why not? I mean, their, their Saab Vigan that um, Paul's doing is fantastic. You know, it's a, a next step up. And I know they've got two more kits coming out this year. And I know that they're going to, I've been told that they're going to be another step up again. So I'm sure that they're catching up, you know, and, and as a new company, they're finding their feet, making their way. And as I say, I'm hats off to them. Obviously, having a company, several companies myself, I know what it's like starting a new company. But anyway, it's things like, you can see here, you've got the... Uh, inlets and everything and they fit in there they don't fit particularly well it's going to take a bit of filling inside just to get them sitting there but as you can see um they sit like that and uh, there's a, still a bit of a gap but nothing that uh, a bit of vallejo putty and an, an earbud can't sort but as you can see these were a bit of a pain to get on and you know the angles and everything it's just it's one of those kits that's going to take your skill um and concentration as well because you really have to focus uh, to make sure that you're doing things in the right way because the instructions are basic but I love it I, I'm actually really enjoying doing this uh, because it presents a challenge which when you've done a lot of modern kits you don't get that challenge and I know I harp on about Airfix and you say oh it's just like Airfix then but it's not because Airfix try to sell you crap as new told they rebox it and um, you know sell you 60, 60 year old stuff in a, in a brand new box and everyone buys it thinking it's new and it's not um, they have started saying new tooling and things like that, but they don't tell you if it's an old tooling, if you know what I mean. But anyway, uh, that aside, um, it's going to need a bit of work. The top side goes to the upper side of the fuselage goes together really well. Uh, the underside with the wings, it just I, I did a dry fit. You can see on the on the thread on the on the forum, I did a dry fit, and uh, it's going to need a bit of finagling for sure. But as I say, I'm really looking forward to it. I've got a couple of bits of aftermarket for it. I've got the. Uh, the FOD covers and a ladder for it. What else was there? Oh yeah, and a, a full cockpit as well. And as you can see, so they're going to add a, a, a nice amount of detail as well. And uh, obviously, I've, I've taken the cockpit. All the cockpit's been done. Oops, a little bit of the seat snapped off when I was uh, cutting it, but that's just got to be glued back on. You can see where I've taken all the uh, relevant areas of the cockpit down, ready for to have the photo etch put on. The resin seats are nice, um, and obviously with the uh, with the Eduard set here, you do get all the um, seat belts and uh, and that sort of stuff and and everything. So it's gonna that one set alone. That's the only aftermarket you need for this. You don't need any extra aftermarket. So people say, oh, you need God knows how much. You don't because it comes with resin and everything. The only bit of aftermarket you need is that which is a tenner. So um, and like most kits, if you're going to build aircraft to a high standard nine times out of ten you're going to get a photo etch kit for the cockpit because that's the the bit part of the aircraft that everyone sees so i'm quite happy with that and uh, i'm really enjoying it and after i think the last couple of builds apart from one i've done a couple of tanks and i've lost my mojo on them because afe is not really my uh uh love aircraft is my love so so anyway so that aside uh, one more thing, uh, that's all my builds and everything, uh, but I think the next one is going to be, obviously with the uh, ISM Star Wars SIG, uh, my next build is going to be uh, this I think, um, it was a toss up between this and the Darth Vader, but I'm going to go for this initially, got the rest of the year to finish them off, so uh, probably got to do a few, but there's, there's, there's a lot of plastic in there, and even though it's a snap kit, it shall be glued together obviously, but the detail on there is fantastic. Great kit of detail. I'll do a quick review of this and the other Star Wars kits I've got and they'll be out over the next week or so. Uh, but that's my uh, that's going to be my next project. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get halfway through the aircraft before I start this, um, uh, through the lads, and, and then I'll crack on with this. And as I say, the Tiger will be something that I'll do over the next coming months as and when. So, um, and by the end of the year, that will be finished. But, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm actually quite happy where I am now. I managed to get a few more hours on the bench in that each week. So, um, yay! But, uh, but that's, that's my bench at the moment, so we'll, we'll take you back to the show. Right, well, there you go. A little bit to report. Um, hopefully, uh, I should get... I really have... I know I said at the beginning of the year I was going to take, take a day out every week to, to try and do some, um, some work in that. But uh, with my mortgages moving and you know, trying to get settled here, it's an absolute nightmare to, do, to get anything done. But uh, I have to say that now things have settled down a bit, I am starting to get this month, the last probably three weeks, I've managed to get at least a... A couple of hours, a couple of days a week at the bench, so I've managed to get things moving a bit, which is great. So, um, so I'm really looking forward to actually doing some work again, which is nice. And as I say, I've started that Tarangas kit, which is, um, you know, for a limited run kit. I've done a review of it. There is a review on the on the channel for it, but 
what you've got to remember is a lot of people say, oh, it's crap for the money and all this stuff. But what you've got to remember, it's a limited run kit. It's from a very small manufacturer who's trying to find their way in the kit market. And they're up against people like Academy and, you know, and Tamiya and, and, you know, Trumpeter and all the big boys. And you think, you've got to take your hat off to these guys and say, well done for at least having a go. Yeah, no, it's not the brilliant kit. But I would look to that. When I... Um, taken out of the box and I've started working on it, I, to be honest with you, you look at it and you think, oh, you know what, I'm going to have to pull all my skills out of the box for this. And it's nice once in a while to have a kit that really tests you and challenges you and, you know, really pushes your boundaries a bit. And I think that's great. And, you know, I've been moaning airfix and things like that, but they sell, they try and sell their kits as new kits, even though they're not, which I think is very underhand. This company doesn't. They're just, they're a limited run, you know, small company that produced it. And the owner of the company, Max, he's a fantastic guy. And he will do anything to help you as well. So uh, I'll I, I, thumbs up for Trangus and thumbs up for this kit, even though it's not special. But it, will, it is the only one you're going to get in 148, and it is the only one out there. And I think someone commented on the YouTube channel. Uh, they said, oh, I'll just wait for one of Revel and things like that. And I said, well, if you just wait for Revel and people like that to bring a kit out like that, you could be waiting God knows how many years. But not only that, you're not supporting the little manufacturer who are the guys that you know, you really need out there because they will bring out the subjects that you won't get from the big guys, you know. So I'm all for it. And, uh, you know, uh, so again, there to the naysayers, you can go and do one as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, uh, let's, uh, that's, my, that's another little rant this week. <laughs> uh, we're going to go over and see what Paul's been doing this month. So over to Paul. So thanks, Lee. Um, welcome to my second to a new show. No uh, face to camera this week. Um, it's only been a couple of weeks since we did the last show, and I've got not much to talk about. Which people who know me, yes, I know. That's an absolute miracle. So yeah, rather than me waffling on camera for a minute, because that's probably what it all have been. Uh, I brought it straight over to the uh, the bench. A uh, couple of things. Number one, uh, a purchase I made, which we'll go through. I'm gonna go through my builds and finish builds and a bit. So I'm after for a while. I'll open the box and I'll just have a quick look through. Uh, load of uh, six GBs ended the Rising Sun uh, GB ended on the end of the month, and the Eggplane Sig ended at the same time too. We had the In the Navy one start and the Homeland GB one start as well. Um, so not the In the Navy, sorry, the Homeland GB. My God, what a man of us! In the Navy started last month. Uh, so the Homeland GB started. Home State Partner. Um, whether it will be or not, I don't know. I'm trying to think what to do. Fancy doing the links. Um, but that means buying an Airfix kit, and I've already bought four this month, so I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, on to my builds. Uh, like I said, it's only been a few weeks, so not as much to go through as usual, but still quite a bit, to be fair. You know, I'm a prolific modeler. I have a lot of time, and I make a lot of time to do my modeling. Um, this isn't just a hobby for me. I need this to keep me sane, because I will lose the plot and go do lally if I don't do this. So I do allocate a lot of time. Anytime I get free, and when I'm not with the family or working, etc., I'm in here doing this, and that's why you see me in a lot done. So, first off, we've got a couple uh, started, and one completed as well. So we'll go through the starter kits, and then we'll go to the completes at the end. So, I think I talked about this in the last show. Uh, I was going to start this. This is the AFE Club uh, Mark III Churchill. Um, it's a beautiful kit. Uh, I went together, probably took me about a week. About a week to assemble it. Tricky little kit, all these road wheels and that. Made it quite a tricky kit. Metal barrel of the kit though, uh, resin mantlets, which is nice. Um, it went on hold for a little bit because the kit tracks were appalling. Uh, I tried twice to get them done and I just gave up. Uh, in fact, I gave them to, to Mike Mike Cohen. I know Mike, Mike hates being called that, but it's tough, Mike. It's any way I can describe it to people. Uh, so Mike's been given those and I bought myself a set of for all tracks for us. So I'll burnish them, get them on. And the reason they got held off, these pop off. Um, so you can display the tracks if you want. I'll probably remove a panel, don't know yet, I'll see. Undecided, and I wanted to make sure that A, I could get these back on and off before I painted, and that the tracks didn't need to go on first, which I've got a feeling they will do before these go on. So that went on hold. So this is ready now. It's a little bit of tidy, there's a couple of glue marks, stupid one there where I picked it up like an idiot. Um, just needs a little bit of tidying up, uh, the tool sticking on, a few little bits and bobs on the front fenders here. Uh, get those tracks assembled, test fitted, see what order of process we're going to do it in, get it primed and away we go, get it painted. I bought a load of crew, I uh, bought a uh, Royal Model Churchill crew set, uh, a D-Day uh, twin figure set and a Verlinden 
uh, figure set that I'm going to do a little dio. This thing going over a very slight hill, uh, coming to a fence with the uh, idea of ramming through the fence. I'm at the, there's a, I've got a Bren gunner uh, and a couple of infantry guys with an officer at the top that we uh, supporting the uh, the tank and the other uh, crew and what have you. So yeah, nice little build, tricky little build. Uh, wasn't the easiest kit to build. First, uh, I think it's the first bit of Allied armor. Uh, British armor I've ever built. Yeah, thinking back, think, think, think. I think it is first ever British armor I've ever built. Uh, World War Two anyway, and nice little kit. Tricky but nice, really good. Um, secondly, uh, I bought Airfix's brand new Hurricane. I'll grab the box quickly so you can see. Um, I picked this up. Well, I picked up the next one you're going to see because um, I like the subject. But if I get to the side shot, you can see it. Uh, Airfix is brand new Hurricane Mark 1. Uh, there's been numerous reviews out there, so I didn't bother reviewing it. Um, picked it up last night and started it, and this is where I got to within maybe a couple of hours, I think. Brand new tool. I know I often slate Airfix. I hate Airfix's ethics as a business, where they rebox uh, their old kits in the exact same box as their new ones. I've got a bit hanging up as new ones and unsuspected people. Buy a nice kit, a nice shiny box, go home, and it's an old 1970s piece of crap. I often get a load of grief for saying this on the Facebook page and forum, etc. But I'm right, you, sh you shouldn't do it. It should say on the front, new tool. It should say, uh, 90, you know, old tool uh, kit, but they don't. So, unless you know prior knowledge, um, then you're not going to know. You're just not going to know what you're buying, and that's my big beef with them. I also think they sit on the laurels of their old names, so people who come back into the hobby think I used to build Airfix when I was a child, I'll build this one now, and must get totally disheartened building a crappy kit, and maybe they quit the hobby and never come back, and that's my biggest concern. And there was a big blow up on Facebook yesterday with a guy who just wouldn't let it rest, and in the end he left the page, because all he did was harp on and on and on. And I have an opinion, he had an opinion, I accept them both, my opinions, my opinion, his opinions is, he was forcing his upon me. And it's not going to happen. I'm not going to listen to it all day long. And um, he left. Of his own free will, he totally left the page. But the new toolkits, great. Um, they've still got the faults, but they still go together very well. They're cheap, and they make a lot of subjects a lot of manufacturers don't cover. So it's quite often um, do or die sometimes with the kits that you can get. But like I say, this went together in probably, I think it was about a couple of hours last night. I have got a Tamiya Mosquito. That I'm going to build for Nigel Wells' SIG. I'll get to that in a minute as well. In fact, I'll do it now. Nigel Wells is hosting a Mosquito uh, SIG on ISM. He's probably going to do it on YouTube now, Nigel, as well. Um, so, as a few of us join that, any Mosquito, any scale. Uh, I've got a 48 scale Tamiya, but I've added a few aftermarket bits uh, resin wheels, uh, ejector seats, kind of mass, etc. I'm waiting for those to arrive. We'll be in Bank Holiday Monday. I'm not going to get them until probably Thursday, Friday next week. So I thought, right, something quick in the meantime. Oh, I'll flick it. And I started this. So a couple, couple of hours of work. I got all the cockpit assembled. That's ready for paint. Uh, I assembled a fuselage last night as a dry fit just to check any fit or gaps. And it doesn't seem like it's going to be too bad. Uh, it's going to need a little bit of clamping here and there, a little bit of filler. But overall, it actually doesn't look too bad. Top of the fuselage closes up nice, there's a little bit of a gap on the front cowling, but I think a bit of glue, maybe a tiny bit of filler, will get that underneath this front part here, that might be a bit tricky. I'm going to need a bit of sand in here between the wing roots. Leading edge of the wings, again, going to need a bit of work, but it shouldn't be too hard, and hopefully it'll make a nice hurricane, because the hobby's screaming out for a nice 48 hurricane, because the has uh, Italia ones are horrible. Uh, I've got the Hasegawa one, which I believe is quite hard to find now. So hopefully this is good, but a couple of hours work, got it all assembled. Cockpit's in there, world's framework. And it turned out nice, to be fair. So this will get a coat of primer today, painted up with that cockpit. And hopefully this will be a quick build, like the one I'm about to show you as well. So overall this looks a good kit. Like I said, there's plenty of reviews out there. Uh, some good, some bad. Um, um, last Friday, um, I had a mad idea of I wanted to build the Seafire. I was going into the in the Navy Sig on the forum, so I went out and I bought Airfix's 48 scale Seafire. Now, I will admit, um, normally I only buy an Airfix kit if I know it's a new tool. 
I thought this was a new tool. I went out and bought it. I come home and print on the side of the fuselage. It's 1996. I thought, oh crap, what have I gone and done? Thought I'd bought an old kit. But to be fair to it, other than the dire, dire canopy, which I'll show in a second, uh, this thing went together absolutely perfectly. Hard any fill I needed anywhere. Just a few, there was probably not even half a dozen tiny little spots. And I mean millimetres wide. I just needed a dab here and there. And it went together perfect. And I built this in just over a week, start to finish. Thoroughly enjoyed it, um, simply because it was an out of the box build. There was no photo etch, no aftermarket other than the canopy. Uh, it was just a simple, quick build, and it's one of the builds I've enjoyed most this year, if I'm honest. Uh, great paint job, nice camo scheme, and I was really happy with how it turned out. So, it's Airfix's FR47 Seafire. So, like I say, nice paint scheme. So, you got the Sky that was done in ACAN, and the uh, extra dark sea grey that was using Mr. Hobby. I'm going to try and turn it around, not knocking everything off. Um, came out well. Usual paint effects that I do, so post shading, uh, panel fading, bleaching, etc. Didn't need to do any, sorry, pre shading. Did I say post shading or pre shading? Don't know. Pre shading, panel fading, bleaching, etc. I didn't have to post shade because the pre shading showed through absolutely perfectly, so I didn't bother. Uh, I then come in, give it a wash. Um, we hand painted on the ID stripes on the wings and the tail, and uh, at the end, we came in with some pigments and added a bit of panel fade, which is a new thing I've started doing. I uh, did it on the Hasegawa George, that you saw the last month, and I think the effect's good. Underneath, came out really well. I've got one window there that I completely forgot to unmask, uh, so we will get to that. We finished it on, it was Friday night, it was late hours. But yeah, not without its fault at all, but for me, that twin prop, the CRP prop, absolutely brilliant. Must have been a joy to fly these things. And overall, came out really well. So happy with how it looks. Um, like I say, one of the most enjoyable kits I built for a while, just because it was simple out of the box build. Gonna enjoy that Hurricane. I bought several others. I bought a PR Spitfire, the other Sea Fire uh, that Airfix do. And uh, like I say, I'm not a fan of the company, but there are some subjects that they do that I am gonna commit to buy to. I have taken a fair bit of ribbon over it, but I don't particularly care. But like I say, happy with how I came out. Uh, managed to compete in an oh not the uh the duck off the tail now well done we'll glue that back on a little bit uh managed to complete another uh group build on the form which i'm always happy to do and uh like i say not a bad kit kit canopy was terrible so this is a squadron vac formed one first time i've ever used a vac form canopy and uh yeah awesome nice and clear well no problem masking is a little bit tricky but other than that very very easy build very very simple I really can't fault it. If I show you the the kick canopy, I don't know if I'll be able to see it. But number one, it didn't fit at all. Wouldn't fit anywhere along the sides. I haven't got my close-up cameras there. I've been lazy, unfortunately. But the clarity of that, there's more clarity looking for a brick wall. Um, absolutely shockingly bad. And like I said, it didn't even fit the fuselage. Two huge gaps either side. And even forcing it down, there were still gaps there. So that was an absolute waste of time. The front one, the front screen was a bit better. Uh, a bit more clarity to it. And it did actually fit. But that rear part, not a hope in hell. And I test fitted it and gave up, which is why it's not cleaned up properly. So there you go. So there's my current builds. Uh, builds finished. One. Uh, onto the kit. So about This is a kit I've been after. For about a year now, um, searching eBay for it relentlessly, missing out several times because they go for silly money, and I finally got my hands on one. So it is the uh, the Airfix. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Oops, wrong kit. My bad. It is the uh, Dragon Cyber Hobby Zero One uh, Six Two Eight Six. That Tiger. Been after this for a long time. As you can see, I've been in the box. And I can't get to shut because I need to sort it out. But I knew I was going to open it today, so I didn't bother. Um, this is one of the rarest uh, Dragon Cyber Robbie kits you can get, or, well, you can find. It's the first ever white box they ever did. It's probably one of the most packed kits they ever did. Limited edition, limited run, stop making it, and um, I've been searching for this for a long time. Got this one from abroad. You're probably going to collapse and hear the price I paid, but the last one I found in the UK, uh, I was watching, actually sold for £380, which is just mind-boggling to pay that. For this, I paid 215 for this delivered from the USA. 
that is a big enough price and all by itself for a 135 kit but like I say uh, oh, 380 oh my god nearly twice as much as I paid to me that's crazy to you guys 200 odd quid is probably crazy I missed out on one last year for £117 and I kick myself every day for not getting that one but it's tough the scenes have skyrocketed lately in price and there's quite a few appeared on eBay that's where you'll find these um, and I've been after one for a long time so what do you get in the box well as you can see it's certainly well stuffed because I've been in there and I can't get the bloody lid back on let's put that box over there so normal I'm going to take this camera up Typical Dragon Box, uh, I think it's a 2005 kit, let me look at the box, yeah, yeah 2005, so it's 10 years old, um, typical Dragon card, what's well, cards, well there is a card in this, um, so on one, we'll get to this one in a sec, you've got your Magic Tracks, you have your Clear Parts, Coppola, uh, your tow cables, your tow hooks, shackles, um, round casing bases, Jerry can PE, decals, five full hoses, um, so quite enough in there, grills, tool clamps, everything in there, sorry about the shine, I'm not unwrapping it, I will build it, but for now it's just staying wrapped, so you can hear the bags, so I'm not going for the whole kit, I'm just going to show you all the goodies, so quite a lot of extras there alone, and then if you move on to the main bit, so in here, quite similar to what you get in Dragon 6252 and 6253, you've got your PE grills, your barrel, your bucket, two different types of tow and shackle, uh, five different types of round and round casings, the square edged uh, exhaust shrouds, you've got your shovel cover, your mine dischargers, your pins for the tow and shackles, the mine discharger brackets, quite a lot of stuff, the wiring is pre-bent pre in there as well, it's quite hard to show but like I say it's a well stocked box, uh, it's getting rarer than rare now. I will be building this, I'm not collecting it, I bought it to build, I did think at one point of thinking no don't build it, keep it, but no it deserves to be built and I think it's really, it's got, it's got to be built, to do it justice and to make it worthwhile paying the price I did, I've got to build it, there'll be collectors out there spinning in the grave if you ever see this, um, when I do build this, sorry, you put the box on, it springs back up, when I do build it I will film me unwrapping all the plastic bags so all the collectors out there can have heart attacks and they go, oh my god, what are you doing? So there we go, so yeah, plenty of other things I bought as well, I'm not going to go through them because we'll be there all day. Um, and that's it, so thanks for looking, not my usual segments, but just me sat on the bench, well not on the bench because I break it, but sat at the bench, uh, showing my builds and what have you. So there we go, so I'll take you back to Lee, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next month. Well, there you go. As as usual, Paul's been quite prolific. Um, it's, I keep saying it every month, but I wish I had his time to spare. I really do. Uh, but uh, thanks again, Paul. Uh, been very good work, and obviously start those two builds and everything for for ISM, which are great. So we look forward to those, especially the Kraz one. I'm looking forward to that. That's for sure. So now we come to the end of the show, and time to say a big thank you to our sponsors. Uh, so a big thank you to eModels for our monthly prize draws. Models are go for our GVs and everything like that. Uh, Retro kit for our Easter egg plane SIG. So thank you very much for that, guys. Um, and I'm sure we'll be doing something with them again next year on the next Easter egg one. Uh, to ourselves, UMP, obviously Ultimate Modern Products for sponsoring wherever we can. And uh, that was the brother-in-law, uh, wherever we can. And uh, to Sean at S&M stuff for, for sponsoring our SIGs and everything like that. So uh, thank you all to it. Cheers. Salut. And uh, until next time, take care. Goodbye. See you later.